It's nation time. Two news begins right now with Neon Collins. Brothers and sisters, we are only days away from our seventh Pan-African Synod, and I just want to take a few moments to put the significance of our gathering in context. In the original Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church Constitution, our beloved founder, Jeremoja Bebe Ajman, mandated that we come together as a total organization every five years. He explained that it was necessary to maintain shared vision and commitment, to reinforce the bonds of love and fellowship between us as a community with a mission, to clarify our organizational direction, and to receive spiritual inspiration for the struggle ahead. Our last gathering was the Quad Centennial Synod in Atlanta in 2019. In the five years since, we've gone through quite an ordeal. We have endured a global pandemic that shut us off from each other for two years. We lost many committed longtime members to the ravages of COVID-19, and we couldn't even give them the homegoing celebrations that they deserved. We survived the financial crisis. We expanded our virtual village electronic communications capacity that has transformed our ability to worship, teach, meet, and plan over distance connecting us with each other and with people the world over. Our praying, soul searching, and rethinking efforts over that time have ordained bold new directions for our movement. You see, a synod is not something to be taken lightly. Although we always have a good time, it's not just a party or a picnic or a reunion. A synod is a once in every five year sacramental ritual of recommitment, reunification, redirection, revival, and renewal. It is our once in every five year reconsecration as a sacred fellowship, a covenant community. It is our once in every five year upper room experience where we are all in one place and of one accord, seeking new strength for our earthly battles. So it is a once in five, every five year divine obligation that should be taken seriously by all members. The theme for this synod is passing the baton to a new generation. We are initiating a five year succession planning process designed to replace all operational positions within the Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church with committed younger members. The liberation struggle is ongoing, but unfortunately each one of us has an expiration date. So each generation has the responsibility to prepare another to carry the church beyond our own mortality. We will commission a new generation to assume full responsibility for our program, mission, institutions, and legacy. So that when we come together for our 75th anniversary, we will look totally different than we do today. 
This year, we've coupled the Synod with our annual home homecoming gathering at Beautyland. This is a time when we gather with friends and family on our place in the world to reconnect, recreate, reflect, and relax. As great as last year's retreat was, you ain't seen nothing yet. And if you miss it, you're gonna have a bad case of FOMO, fear of missing out. I'm trying to save you from that terrible plight. So please, come on, make every effort to be a part of this important and historic gathering. And when someone asks you the question, you tell them proudly, like any committed black Christian nationalist, of course I'm going to the Synod. See you soon, brothers and sisters. Amen and Ashe. I believe that human society stands under the judgment of one God, revealed to all and known by many names. God's creative power is visible in the mysteries of the universe and the revolutionary Holy Spirit, which will not long permit men to endure injustice, nor to wear the shackles of bondage and the rage of the powerless when they struggle to be free. And in the violence and conflict, which even now threaten to level the hills and the mountains. I believe that Jesus, the Black Messiah, was a revolutionary leader sent by God to rebuild the Black nation Israel, to liberate African people from powerlessness and from the oppression, brutality, and exploitation of the white Gentile world. I believe, I believe, I believe that the revolutionary spirit of God embodied in the Black Messiah is born anew in each generation and that Black Christian nationalists constitute the living remnants of God's chosen people in this day and are charged by God with responsibility for the liberation of African people. I believe, I believe, I believe that both my survival and my salvation depend upon my willingness to reject individualism. And so I commit my life to the liberation struggle of African people and accept the values, ethics, morals, and program of the Black nation defined by that struggle and taught by the Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church. Get connected and stay connected online with the Shrine of the Black Madonna Virtual Village. Worship, join, learn, give, connect with us all in one place in just three easy steps. One, go to our landing page via our link tree URL or QR code. Two, browse our selections and decide what you wanna do and where you wanna go. Three, Click on your choice and we'll take you right there. Yes, in just three easy steps, you can worship, join, learn, give, all in one place. So get connected and stay connected with us online at the Shrine of the Black Madonna Virtual Village. As we move closer toward the Synod and Beulah Land reunion on June 20th, I want to prepare your hearts and minds for the great opportunity this historical event affords us as both a religious organization and a social, political, economic movement. The Synod and Reunion offers us a unique occasion to renew our spiritual vows and to reimagine our sacred mission to build a Pan-African world community with power. While making it relevant and accessible to future generations, both here at home and abroad. Using the context, the three R's of religion, I wanna lift up the themes of renewal, reunion, and restoration, which are all interwoven into the historical fabric of the African nation Israel from its inception under the guidance of the first Holy Patriarch Abraham, all the way through to the New Testament times as taught by Jesus and practiced by the apostles as they established the early Jerusalem church at Pentecost. The mythologic 
mythological stories of Genesis from the creation story, the Garden of Eden, the fall of man, Cain and Abel, Noah and the flood, and the Tower of Babel all speak to renewal, reunion, and restoration as being essential aspects of honoring our relationship with divine will and purpose. The ancient Hebrews came together regularly, not just to recognize and celebrate their great ancestors or to mark important historical events, but also to renew or restore their faith and commitment to the covenant, the law, and the prophets. Their ritual gatherings also help to initiate a time of collective healing, forgiveness, and reparation. The first family reunion ever recorded is found in the book of Genesis chapter 46, which tells the story of Joseph being sold away by his brothers and then being reunited with them after seven years of drought in Egypt. After being separated for years, Jacob and his sons are rejoined. Joseph forgives them for selling him away. They greet one another, embrace and weep tears of joy as they reunite for the first time since the great famine. The book of, Le of Leviticus tells of the year of Jubilee, when the people of God came together every 50 years to release folks from their bondage of debt, thus restoring them to a place of wholeness again. Jubilee also served to remind them about the primacy of their sacred struggle for freedom and to renew their sacred values that served as the foundation of their faith and spiritual sustenance as the people of God. Leviticus chapter 25 verses 10 through 13 read, and you shall consecrate the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land to all its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee for you and each of you shall return to his possession and each of you shall return to his family. That 50th year shall be a jubilee to you. In it you shall re neither sow nor reap what grows of its own account, nor gather the grapes of your untended vine, for it is the jubilee. It shall be holy to you. You shall eat its produce from the field. In this year of jubilee, each of you shall return to his possession. The biblical intention of this jubilee mandate was that every so often, the covenant people must give serious consideration to the vision of a kingdom of God on earth and how their lives religiously, morally, socially, and economically aligned with Yahweh's purpose. In a modern context, we too must consider how our lives align with our sacred vision to build a Pan-African world community with power, a sacred vision that began with the ascendancy of Brother Marcus Mosiah Garvey and the Universal Negro Improvement Association calling for Africa for the Africans. It is a sacred vision which expresses our deepest longing to live in this world as an independent, self-sufficient, and dignified group, able to speak for ourselves, name and define ourselves, work, build, and create for ourselves as the beautiful and righteous energy beings our Creator intended us to be from the very beginning of time. The scripture said, and you shall proclaim liberty throughout all the land to all its inhabitants. These are the very same words the prophet Isaiah re reinforced in chapter 61, verse 1, saying, God has chosen me and sent me to bring good news to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to announce release to captives and freedom to those in prison. Centuries later, Jesus expressed those same words when he first announced in his ministry, saying the Lord has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and to set the downtrodden free. The idea that God created us not to suffer, not to be second class citizens, not to be victims of brutality and injustice, nor economically and politically subjugated by another group of people, but to live in full expression of our God-given talents, energies, and potential as a people. Throughout the history of the African nation Israel, they had to struggle against foreign nations um, and to maintain their own cultural and spiritual traditions and to overcome the difficult challenges of being exiled, scattered, and divided as a sovereign nation. In the early days, 
They spent years just wandering around in the wilderness, trying to find a promised land, a place to call home. During the period of the judges, they fought over and over again to maintain their own identity and purpose as a covenant people. During the age of the prophets, the nation became divided into the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, making them more vulnerable to attacks from outside enemies. In the sixth century BC, they had to return from Babylon and rebuild. They had to return from Persia and rebuild. Yet throughout all these struggles, they always maintained their jubilee vision and continued to remind themselves that despite all obstacles, God called them to be a people set apart. It was primarily because of their identification with their own values and traditions that they remained together as a people down through those years. Living as exiles in Babylon, the prophet Jeremiah told them in chapter 29, verse 5 through 7, build houses and live in them, plant gardens and eat what they produce. Take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not decrease, but seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf for its welfare you will find your welfare. Here again is the theme of renewal, reunion, and restoration, calling them back to their roots to experience a Sankofa moment in order to move their struggle forward. I don't know about you, but I believe we are long overdue for a Sankofa moment. In these turbulent times where we are being persecuted on every front, where our history and culture are being dismissed, our right to vote and to have representation being denied, our right to have a voice to be heard, being silenced. Our young people are being flooded with disinformation and disillusionment. In these times where too many of our people are on the wrong side of the digital divide, we need a Sankofa moment, a time to regroup, refresh, recover. A Sankofa moment is simply a time where we collectively recall who we are and remember our urgent need to recover our humanity so that we may continue to struggle and fight to live in the world, not as subhuman, but as whole, self-determined, self-actualized human beings. Our own homegrown theologian, Bishop Jawanza Eric Clark, says in his book, Reclaiming Stolen Earth, and I quote, we are no longer a revolutionary movement focused on dismantling and deconstruction of Western society, so much as we are now called to create transforming communities across national boundaries, enclaves of refuge, healing, restoration, and recovery, ultimately intended to address black economic powerlessness, creating a path for black control of the means of production and at the same time, restoring ecological balance and harmony with the rest of the created order. Beulah land exemplifies ecological repair, addressing the need for food sovereignty, providing an economic engine, offering protection from an anti-black society and incorporating an African-centered understanding of the earth, reminding human beings of their proper relationship to the earth and its needed maintenance, end quote. As the world's first human families, the first ones to navigate and cultivate the earth, the first people to develop and organize culture, and first ones to build civilizations, the Most High calls us to be good stewards and caretakers of the earth. The scripture also said, you shall return to your family. Sometimes we need to remind ourselves of the important role we play in the restoration of our people and the refurbishment of the earth. What do you mean, preacher? I'm saying Beulah land represents the largest black land ownership, recovery, restoration, and as our presiding Bishop Jeremoji Kimati likes to say, largest self-determination project in North America. 
Beulah Land symbolizes the place of renewal, reunion, restoration, and refuge from an overly racist society where we can come together as one people to work in harmony and economic, political, and social unity along with ecological repair. It is our golden opportunity to reclaim stolen earth. In the late 19th century, both in Georgia and in South Carolina, black folks own more than 400,000 acres of land. Beulah land is a significant effort to recover something precious that we have lost. How many of you know one of the most valuable cycles of life is the cycle of losing and finding. Losing your way and finding your way. Losing your faith and recovering your faith. Losing your purpose and reclaiming your purpose. There are many times in our lives where we must go back and retrieve, recover, revisit, and repurpose our lives. As we prepare for this long-awaited and anticipated synod and reunion on our own reclaimed land, Beulah land, we ought to be praying fervently not just for our personal renewal, but also for the restoration of our shared faith. Can you say, I was once lost, but now I'm found? I'm trying to tell you the Synod and Reunion affords us a chance to be found again, to recover all that we have lost since the last time we came together as one. Over a decade ago, ABC News was reviewing the then maturing GPS technology, and they said this, the price we pay for the convenience of GPS could be losing our own sense of direction. How many of you know that getting lost helps develop our sense of place and contributes to a functioning society? In other words, there's a social function to being lost. And that social function of being lost will itself be lost. Think about the last time you had to ask somebody or somebody had to ask you for directions. That small bit of social communication in which a stranger and a native meet at some point will slowly ebb away. The question is, will we feel ourselves to be native everywhere or to be strangers everywhere? As we pay less and less attention to the little details of our surroundings, the landmarks, the streets, the buildings, we're missing out on some of the building blocks of our social reality. We don't just lose our way without a GPS. Many of us are increasingly losing our way in life. And over-reliance on technology, modern thinking, and pop psychology has created an increasing feeling of lostness in society, culture, and life. This is our golden opportunity to recover some of the little things you may have lost along the road of life. Is anybody here looking to find whatever you have lost? Reunion, renewal, and restoration are about returning to family. Family values, family roots, family love. Metaphorically speaking, returning to family means revisiting the key aspects of what makes us who we are. Family means we are responsible for one another. Family means we have an obligation to love, honor, and protect one another. Family means that no one gets lost, left behind, or forgotten. Family means putting our arms around each other and being there for each other. How many of you know families are like branches on a tree? We may all grow in different directions, but our roots remain as one. Can you see, say we are one people? As African people, we are one family with the same roots. Can you say we are one people? The same mode of transportation that brought me here brought you here. We are one people. The same horrific and completely dehumanizing experience of chattel slavery that my great-great-grandparents endured, your great-great-grandparents had to endure. We are one people. The same hell that I catch for being black and oppressed every day in America you catch. We are one people. The same limitations, restrictions, and glass ceilings I have to face, you have to face as well. We are one people people. The same challenges and obstacles I have to overcome, you have to overcome. We are one people. Although we may be alienated, separated, isolated, or otherwise divided amongst ourselves, the bottom line is we are all one people. We may have differences. We may get upset or even struggle just to like each other sometimes, but what matters 
is we are one people. We never give up on family. We always remember to keep the door open, to keep the light on, to keep hope alive because we are one people. Some members of the family may be Christian. Some may be Muslim. Some may practice traditional African religions like Yoruba, Ifa, or Voodoo. And others may even claim, I don't believe it, to be non-religious, but we are all part of the same body of African people. We are one people. The very same African people who created thousands of languages, religions, and spiritual paths. And for that sake, for the sake of our health and wellness, for the sake of our collective well-being, every now and again, the Holy Spirit calls us to come together to do something righteous, some ritual work around renewal, reunion, and restoration because we are one people. The three R's serve to realign us with that spiritual mandate that God gave the first human family in the mythical Garden of Eden. The reason we come together, the reason we love and trust one another, the reason we work and struggle together is because we don't get to choose our family. The Most High made us one people. So like it or not, melanated folks, we are one people. And if the creator created us this way, who are we to question divine will and purpose? We are one people. Ashe and amen. Family, if what you heard in the message moved or inspired you to do something, then don't hesitate to reach out to us and discover how you can become an agent for change and an instrument of social, political, economic, and environmental justice together with us as a follower or subscriber of our Best Self Movement. So don't delay. Just go to our web link, www.linktr.ee forward slash SOBM. That's Linktree forward slash SOBM. And get involved in our Pan-African global struggle for dignity, self-determination, power, and freedom today. And please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and comment to help us grow our virtual Pan-African village with our people everywhere. Ashe and Amen.